Welcome to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is the third Sunday of Lent, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Alexio Divina is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. And let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our gospel passage, proclaimed by Michael Toole. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There was once a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. When bad things happen to good people, we often think, as the Jewish people once thought, that God has to be punishing them for some sin committed by them or their ancestors. Good people are so undeserving of the bad things that come their way that we cannot fathom any rational explanation for their suffering. And so we put the blame on some past sin and ultimately put the blame on a loving but occasionally unpredictable God. Such an explanation provides a simplistic answer to the imponderable age-old question, why do good people suffer. But while God surely does have some oversight over the world that he created, God does not interfere with humanity's free will or with the natural workings of an extraordinarily complex world. In today's gospel, according to St. Luke, we hear Jesus correcting the thinking of the Jewish people who do no doubt attributed Pilate's murderous rampage in the temple and the construction accident at Siloam to the supposed sinfulness of the victims. Jesus assures his listeners that those who died were not greater sinners or more guilty than everyone else. Jesus refocuses the discussion, moving it away from the potential sinfulness of any victim and moving it toward the missed opportunity of repentance. We might use the words of St. Paul to the Corinthians in our second reading to describe the two historical references of Jesus in the gospel. These things happened to them as an example and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure, 
should take care not to fall. Jesus' parable of the fig tree, which follows Jesus' historical references, enforces the importance of repentance, conversion, and the turning away from sin, making it a perfect parable for this third Sunday of the Lenten season. Whether it is a fig or any other type of fruit-bearing tree, the expectation of the grower is that one day the tree will bear fruit. When the owner of the orchard in today's gospel, after three years of patient searching for fruit, discovers that his tree still has not borne any figs, he orders his gardener to cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? But the gardener, with godlike patience, begs for another year to cultivate the ground and fertilize it so that it may bear fruit in the future. If it still does not bear figs, then, and only then, can it be cut down. We are that fig tree in today's gospel planted in the orchard of the Lord. And we are expected to bear fruit, the fruits of the Spirit that St. Paul has taught us so well. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, humility, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, forgiveness, and self-control. We read that in Galatians chapter 5. When those fruits are absent, there is sin and there is the need for the cultivation of repentance like the gardener in the gospel God gives us endless opportunities to turn away from sin and selfishness and this Lenten season is a particular opportunity to increase our efforts to cooperate with the grace which flows to us from a loving God that we might produce the fruit of the Spirit. As the psalmist says in today's psalm response, God pardons all our iniquities, heals all our ills, redeems our life from destruction, and crowns us with love and compassion. Our God is indeed kind and merciful. And he patiently waits for us to turn away from sin and selfishness and produce the good fruit intended from the beginning of time that we might be kind and merciful to each other. After our closing prayer, we read the scripture passage and contemplate the message heard. Concentrate on a thought that comes to you, a verse or maybe just even a word that touches you, and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and how you may spiritually grow closer to Him. And let us complete our divine reading with a closing prayer. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth, with your holy word that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be upon you always, and may his blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.